again, friends, and welcome to Gamecock Central Radio. It's Emerson Phillips joined by our columnist, Scott Davis, for a look at Scott's column this week that is up on the website. We hope you'll check it out. Scott, you didn't know what to expect against the uh, Arkansas Razorbacks on Saturday and turned out to be very pleasantly surprised. I was. I went into this game really historically since South Carolina joined the SEC. They uh, struggled to stop the run when they play Arkansas. That's been Arkansas's identity for quite some time. They like to be a bruising physical team. And South Carolina, typically, even in the best of years, has not been one of the greatest teams in America at stopping teams like that and stopping the run over and over and over again for a team that just wants to establish that identity. So I did have some doubts about whether this Gamecock team would be able to get out of Williams Price with a W on Saturday, but not only did they do that, they really dominated Arkansas. They dominated uh, the lines of scrimmage, which was surprising to me, especially on the offensive line for South Carolina, considering the injuries that they have. And they won a relatively easy SEC game, one of those games that could have gone either way in the league, and you don't see South Carolina dominate those games very often, but that's exactly what they did on Saturday. Yeah, we'll get to more on the Gamecocks domination, particularly the way the Gamecocks shut down the Arkansas run game in just a moment, but Scott, you didn't know uh, what to expect on Saturday, but you did know that this was one of the most important games on the schedule. Absolutely. Um, If you look at South Carolina's best season since they've been in the SEC, it's been the ones where they've taken care of kind of middle, what I call middle of the road SEC teams. And that's no disrespect to those teams because South Carolina's program, to be quite frank, is, has been a middle of the road SEC team for most of their time in the league as well. And so if the Gamecocks are going to succeed, they need to be beating teams like Arkansas, teams like Mississippi State, teams like Kentucky which they've struggled to do in recent years all of a sudden. Uh, And if they can win those games, most of the time they're going bowling and and there seems to be some kind of momentum for recruiting and Gamecock fans are generally satisfied with the direction of the program. It's those years where they're losing games like that, that that doesn't happen and then things begin to start floating towards a negative place and So for South Carolina to win this game, first of all, was a big step forward for them, but also to do it in fairly dominating fashion, something they did earlier this season on the road at Missouri, another classic example of what I'm talking about here. And so if they can keep winning games like that with relative ease, I think Gamecock fans will be pleased about the progress they're making. Seize the Day is the headline of Scott's column that's up this week on GamecockCentral.com. We hope you'll check it out. Scott, uh, one of these games that could have gone either way, and the Gamecocks uh, took advantage of an opportunity here Saturday. And I like what you said in your column this week about uh, these games that could go either way. You know, these are kind of the type of games that make or break your season, and and the Gamecocks appear to have picked up a a solid win in a game that, again, we didn't know what was going to happen Saturday. We didn't, and and now we've. I think we feel like we know a little bit more about this South Carolina team, which is it felt like they were making progress in 2017 on defense. The stats still weren't great because the offense has many times this year not helped them very much by staying on the field. So they have been on the field a long time most of this season, but it seemed, it just seemed like they were getting better. And after a performance, like they had this week, I feel like that's confirmed. We now know South Carolina is a more physical team on defense. They do have the ability to impose their will on, you know, respectable SEC opponents when they're playing well. They did that on Saturday. And as I said in the column, these games are the ones that make or break seasons for South Carolina, almost always, really since they've joined the SEC. It's it's awesome to beat Georgia. It's awesome to beat Florida. But those have not really been the games that seasons have hinged on that often in uh, the last couple of decades. It's been games against Arkansas, games against Missouri, games against Mississippi State or Ole Miss. You, if you can win those kinds of games, then you usually set yourself up into a position where you're looking at seven or eight wins being 
a very real possibility, and that's where they want to be right now. Arkansas running backs, Scott, have had some huge games against South Carolina in years past, and you mentioned a couple of the names of those Arkansas running backs, uh, Madre Hill, Darren McFadden, Felix Jones, you know, the list goes on and on. So for Carolina to completely stymie the Arkansas ground game, that was a big deal on Saturday and certainly set the Gamecocks up for the win. It really was. I I was very impressed by that. I think that South Carolina just unfortunately – it's typically been a team that's viewed as been a, being a little bit soft. You could line up and run the football at them and do it repeatedly. And you could virtually announce to the South Carolina defense, we are running the football right now. And they couldn't do much about it. Saturday, they just completely shut down Arkansas. And Arkansas has you know, had a mediocre season thus far, but they've been very strong in the running game. They put up some big numbers rushing this year. And they just couldn't get anything going at all on Saturday. You've also seen in the past, I hate, hate to say it, but it's just happened, where someone who used to play for South Carolina goes elsewhere and then enjoys a big day against the Gamecocks. saw it a few years back with Kenny Irons, who went to Auburn and then played the Gamecocks and scored a couple touchdowns against them. Um, David Williams came into Williams Bryce on Saturday, and he uh, did do a few things towards the end of the game. But for most of the uh, most of four quarters, he he was shut down, as was every other running back in a Razorback uniform on Saturday. So a very encouraging effort from them. The Gamecock slammed the door on the Arkansas running game, and then that opened things up for the Gamecock defense to make some big plays when Arkansas tried to throw three defensive touchdowns for the Gamecocks on Saturday. And Man, that sure was fun to watch. Absolutely. Sky Moore gets a, a game ball from me in the column this week. I don't think that would be a shock to anybody. He didn't make as many tackles as we often see him make, but I believe that it's his 13th interception in a South Carolina uniform, which is just stunning uh, for a linebacker. And he just finds the football. And this this week he returned it for a pick six. Gamecocks did the same thing again later. And at that point, Arkansas was really out of what they wanted to be able to do on offense. They were so far behind they had to try to play catch up, and that's not at all what they want to do, but I would tell Gamecock fans who maybe don't know how quite how well this defense played on Saturday, I, I would point you to Arkansas's game against Texas A&M, certainly not an elite defense, but they were able to move the football all over the field against the Aggies, and they were not against South Carolina, and so that is, again, if you're a Gamecock fan, something you can point to and say, I see progress being made. Gamecocks rolled up 48 points on Saturday in that win over Arkansas. So plenty of Debo Samuel, large pepperoni pizza game balls to go around this week. You mentioned Sky Moore, uh, Scott, and uh, Pick Sixes gets a game ball this week. That was fun. I enjoyed reading this bit. When opposing quarterbacks are scoring points for the Gamecocks and doing it repeatedly, you are extremely satisfied about life. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I like the phrase pick six. It just sounds good. And it absolutely describes what happens uh, when you use that phrase. And it's just uh, everything about that is fun when you can see a game just really get turned on its ear very quickly when that happens. And it's fun to see the Gamecocks do it. They haven't done it all that often in recent years, but when they do, it's very exciting, and they did it a couple of times on Saturday. Just a really smothering, suffocating effort from that defense, and once Arkansas couldn't get the run game going, as you mentioned earlier, they tried to go to the air, and it just didn't work at all. All right, and a methodical and violent defense befitting a Will Muschamp team helped get williams Bryce cranked back up again Saturday. Scott, we seen the Gamecocks kind of stumble in their first two games at williams Bryce, but, uh, boy, the joint was jumping on Saturday, and that's good to see. They needed a strong effort in front of the home faithful. They That just needed to happen because the fans, and I've talked about this every time just about that you and I have talked this football season, they desperately want to get behind this team and these coaches. They really, really do. And they just need to see any kinds of signs of life when they're in williams Bryce Stadium, and they'll be there. And so Saturday, in front of the home crowds, parents weekend, 
very nice crowd at williams Bryce. so I wasn't sure how that was going to work out, but it looked good up there, and uh, the crowd was very much a part of that game. And that's what they can be for this team if they just get any kind of response from the guys on the field. So, Scott, you're right that uh, perfection remains elusive, and there are three deflated balls this week. Tell us about those. Yeah, well, one of them I gave to myself, and you'll find if you read my column on a regular basis that I often end up getting a deflated ball because I'm a uh, very passionate fan who gets wrapped up in what's happening. And Saturday, I made the point of blurting out that I felt like South Carolina was just not going to lose this game. (laughs) And there was still a lot of time left on the clock. And my wife has seen me done that before and seen the agony happen as one of my teams has allowed another team to get back into the contest. But that just didn't happen at any point Saturday. And those kinds of games are such a relief after roller coasters like we've seen this year with the Kentucky game, the the NC State game, which was a thrilling win, but just gruesome to sit through. The end was just so tense, and this game it, it never really got to that point. And Arkansas was in the mix in the first half, but once South Carolina got a lead, they really kind of took control of the game and and put it on cruise control, and that was fun to watch. So. Um, a deflated ball for me, forgetting how to <laughs> be a fan watching a team win a game and getting a little too excited, as I sometimes do. Scott, I particularly like it when you take the Georgia Bulldogs to task. You've done that once already this year. You did it again in this week's column, and you live in Atlanta, so you're you're somewhat of an authority on Georgia Bulldog fans. And I tell people often that uh, – you know, there are days when I dislike Georgia more than I dislike Clemson. So tell us about your beef with Georgia this week. I've always found their fan base to be hilarious. I don't know what it is about them, but they just uh, they give me an endless amount of comedy and a half over the years. They just are a fan base that really, really, really believes that they're one of the elite programs in college football. I, you know, they're a very good, solid program, always have been, have great resources, uh, lots of fans, that's for sure. And when they're going well, they can be uh, one of the stronger programs in America. But historically, they, they've just been a pretty good uh, college football program. But you would never, ever know that from being around their fans. If they get just a whiff of goodness um, around here, they really, really – you know, crazy, and they've done that more than I think I've ever seen in 2017. Kirby Smart has just set Athens on fire, and so I joked in the column that maybe you aren't aware of this, but Georgia has already won the national championship in football in 2017. It's just, it's just a matter of time. We just need to wrap it up, but it's actually already happened. That seems to be the uh, attitude of Georgia fans around here and, and everywhere that they that they reside, and there are lots of them around me now that I live in Atlanta, and it's been funny to watch them react to this season so far. Seize the Day is the headline of Scott Davis's column that's up on Gamecock Central right now. We do hope you'll check that out. And By now, you've surely heard about the Gamecock Central radio app. We've got this free phone app that allows you to listen to our podcast on your cell phone or mobile device. You can download the app on the App Store and on Google Play. Subscribe to our podcast. Search for Gamecock Central Radio on iTunes, SoundCloud, and other popular services, or just visit radio.gamecockcentral.com. And let us tell you about the Gamecock Central hotline. We've set up this phone number that allows you to call in and be a part of the Gamecock Central podcast. You can call the number, leave a voice message, and Wes Mitchell and Chris Clark will answer your questions on a future edition of Gamecock Central Radio. We will air a recording of your voice on a future edition of GCR, so call the hotline 803-497-9058, taking questions about Gamecock football and upcoming opponents. Give us a call, leave us a message, 497-9058, and get involved with Gamecock Central's radio podcast. Scott, uh, looking forward to Tennessee this weekend. Uh, you know, some infighting in Tennessee the last time they played. They got blown out by Georgia. So uh, Tennessee in a state of flux right now, and it feels like the Gamecocks have got a real opportunity going into Knoxville Saturday. It's a huge opportunity. This is, again, another one of those games that can go either way. Some years that's not the case. Back in 
Peyton Manning's heyday and, and some other periods where Tennessee's been really strong. But uh, this year in 2017, this is exactly the kind of game I'm talking about that can make or break the season for South Carolina. It's a game that you certainly could lose. It's on the road. You're playing a team that no matter how they perform this year has a lot of talent. They certainly have a lot of fans. Neyland Stadium will be rocking, but the Gamecocks, if they want to make a statement that they're taking care of business this year, this is the kind of game that they need to win, just like that Arkansas game was. Tennessee is um, a program that Neyland Stadium has not been a great place for South Carolina. They've lost some heartbreaking games up there, won a couple as well, but you just never know what's going to happen when these two teams get together. Typically, I would think that you know, I, I would have wished Tennessee did not have a bye before playing South Carolina because it gives them extra time to prepare. But this season, I'm not sure if I feel that way because they were so despondent after that Georgia game that I don't know if I would have wanted to immediately play them the very next week. Instead, Tennessee's had two weeks to think about just how badly that game went. There's There's been an extra week involved for more rumors about their coaching situation to swirl. So I'm not sure what kind of atmosphere is going to be, uh, be in Neyland Stadium on Saturday. And I'm hoping that if the Gamecocks can do some good things early, that crowd may want to turn on its, <laughs> its home team. And that would be fun to watch. So this is a huge game for South Carolina in the 2017 season. There's no doubt about it. So when Georgia blew out Tennessee Saturday before last in Knoxville, there were fist fights in the stands, Tennessee fans fighting Tennessee fans. It was crazy. And Wes Mitchell, I think, said it best when he said that uh, the natives are restless in Tennessee. So it's going to be interesting mm-hmm. to see how things play out Saturday when the Gamecocks head to Knoxville for that noon kickoff. Scott, uh, great mm-hmm. talking with you again. A good chat today and a good column you've got this week on Gamecock Central. Thanks very much. Always enjoy it, Emerson. We'll talk to you next week. All right. That's Scott Davis, our columnist from Atlanta. He lives in Atlanta is a Gamecock alum, and he writes each week here on Gamecock Central, bringing us a fan's perspective. So we appreciate Scott, and we thank you for joining us on Gamecock Central Radio. Mm-hmm.